In this video, we'll focus on atlases, a type of asset that you can use in your texturing workflow. We'll start by discussing what atlases are and providing examples. Then we'll delve into how they're used and touch on a few ways to apply them. An atlas is a collection of different images or textures combined into a single file. Atlases improve performance by requiring less separate texture files to be loaded. An atlas can include various elements like stains, fallen leaves, sticks, pebbles, or coffee beans, to name a few. And substance atlases are dynamic, which means they can do much more than a static image atlas. You can use them as a regular grid, use an individual element at high resolution, or randomly scatter them. These dynamic substance files, with extension SPSAR, can be loaded and tweaked in each substance application or in each 3D application that supports Substance SPSAR files. You can find lots of atlases on the Adobe Substance 3D Assets platform. They're located in the Materials section under Atlases. You can also find them by using the search bar and switching the type to Atlases. Thumbnails of atlases mostly show multiple objects beside each other. So let's take a look at the main ways to use atlases. You can quickly turn an atlas into a material with splattered elements. You can layer different atlases together using Sampler or Designer. You can map a single element to a plane, or you can 3D model a simple object from an individual element. Let's dive into each of these and explain the workflow a bit more. So because each atlas is a dynamic substance file, you can drastically change the way the final texture looks. By default, an atlas shows all elements packed in an efficient way, but by changing the mode selection parameter, you can opt for a neat grid arrangement, or you can scale one single element to fill the entire texture, or even do a simple splatter. The splatter mode lets you cover a surface completely with randomly placed elements, giving you a simple tiling material. Any application that loads SPSAR files supports this. You don't even need substance applications like Sampler or Designer. So if you'd want to quickly cover a floor with leaves, an atlas with a good selection of leaves would work. When assigning it to the surface, new parameters appear in the Material tab. First, you change the mode to Splatter. Parameters that control the density and size are important for controlling the appearance. Other important controls include Height Scale Random, Scale Random, and other random parameters. These help to create more detailed and natural looking surfaces. To make a box full of screws and nuts, duplicating the layers and tweaking the random seed helps to bring in some more depth information. You could also fill a litter bin really fast with some trash, for example. So if you want to take things further and combine the elements from an atlas with other materials, you can use Substance 3D Sampler or Substance 3D Designer to splatter atlas elements onto other materials while creating them. This means you can combine multiple atlases and improve existing materials like dirt, grass, ground, and others by adding more details on top of them. You import atlases into Sampler by dragging and dropping them into the Assets panel. Then, you add an Atlas Scatter filter in the Layer stack and drop your Atlas into the correct slot. You tweak the base splattering behavior by adjusting the amount and scale parameters of the Atlas Scatter filter. When playing around with the parameters, you can always reset them back to their default value. And by carefully adjusting the conform and color from background parameters, you blend the Atlas seamlessly into the material, creating a cohesive end result. You can add some randomness to help make it look even more natural. There are a lot of options here as you can stack multiple atlas scatters together. If you make use of the single element mode, you can map an atlas onto an individual plane. Using displacement or regular polymodeling, you can add some depth to this plane and make it seem like a more complex object. The most important aspect here is to choose an atlas element that's not too complex, but could work as a deformed plane. Leaves are a great example of this. In Stager, you can easily create a single leaf by assigning the atlas to the surface and choosing Single Element as mode. For the displacement, simply select the surface, go to the Object tab and activate Displacement. From there, you can adjust the level of detail using the Total Face of Budget and for less detailed version, the Per Triangle Fixed. So let's go into Blender and start with a subdivided plane. Now, load in the atlas you want to use over the Substance plugin, check the tiling, and apply it to the plane. 
we'll reposition and scale the UVs to select the branch we want to see on this plane. This helps judge the output already. We'll alter the vertices on our plane mesh and bring in some deformation to the branch. This gives it some depth instead of just looking like a flat plane. You can very quickly make multiple iterations of it by duplicating the object and playing around with the UVs to get a different branch. All these branches are low poly items and perfect to use in a particle system to build bushes or huge trees. They can also be placed manually if needed. Here you can see some examples done with this method. Now if you want to go a step further, atlases can even be used to create simple 3D models. It's great for cases where you can't get away with just a plane. It's good to create such objects quickly like stones, fruits and others. Instead of working with a plane, we'll use a simple base object and go back and forth between modeling and UV unwrapping. This technique can be used in every 3D software. For the base model, we start with a base shape that's close to the object we want to build. Let's add in the texture and apply it to the base object. We make sure it has enough vertices to work with. Let's unwrap it with project from view and bring it into position. This helps us to model a rough low poly object from the top view that matches the actual shape. Proportional editing tools help to alter the shape in a fast and precise way. After finishing the rough shape, we unwrap it again and reposition it. For additional deformation, we can use a displacement modifier with a clouds texture. Now we duplicate it and reposition the UVs for variation. And finally, we can use Blender's node editor to simply and fast uh, randomize the colors and other attributes to get a more natural and varied result. With the SPSCR, we again have the benefit that we can change different attributes of the material afterwards. Now that you know how useful and versatile atlases are, make sure to check out the assets page to get started quickly. We hope we've clarified how you can work with atlases to improve your work. Have fun with them.